So this is that project where we have the wide opening hinges on some of the doors. Um, also the one with the uh, shadow gap detailing, which turned out quite nicely here. So the problem we've got is this door opens very wide. It's this door pair here and that door pair. Um, but on these 170 degree hinges, it would clash with that gnarled metal handle, which would damage the paint. So the solution we're going with is on these 170 hinges, Blum provides an option to just pop this thing on. Just like that. And that then ensures that the mechanism has to stop. And that's at 130 degrees, which as luck would have it is just plenty just to avoid that conflict. And that's still wide enough to ensure you can get around the foot of the bed. So that was a particular problem where the hinge side was against a handle. Over here where there's no handle, I thought we could avoid using the stops, but even there on these 22 millimeter doors, as they go towards that 170 degree point, they are just gonna foul and bind. So there's the risk that if they're flung open over time, we could get a wear mark just on the face of the, face of the door here. So. We've agreed we'll put the stops on all the doors to avoid any future issues. While we're here on this job, these are our sprayed one-piece CNC cut doors, uh, just in case anyone thought they were vinyl wrap. This is the finish that we're getting now. No joints because it is solid MDF. It's a three millimeter deep route into um, Pinsa Fibra Pan Hydrofugo. And we are getting a very good finish on that panel. So that's CNC machined and then sanded. And to ensure that the door's balanced, we do that same, exact same route on the back. Well, that one's got a mirror on it, but underneath it, that does have the same recess. little two and a half millimeter radius corner there from the five millimeter cutter that we use for finishing it off. We think that looks fine, we don't square that off. So it's a very efficient production process and a very high quality door because there's really no possibility of any cracking joints or wood movement that you'd get with other methods of making doors. And that's sprayed with the Sailac uh, AT99 water-based paint, which we're buying from Ultramax. Now there's one more snagging issue to, fi to fix on this job. You'll notice we've got lighting that turns on with these nice little door sensors. These are drilled into eight millimeter diameter holes. So that is the sensor switch that comes through the back and that's triggering this very discreet strip light. These shelves, I mean, that, one, that one's a top, but for many of them, they are shelves with lips on. We prepared them with the lips in the workshop and mounted the switches in the workshop. And I just forgot that as I was mounting it in this one prior to assembly, I forgot that this particular shelf is set back 90 millimeters. That's something that we often do with internal shelves because it makes absolutely sure that there'd be no conflict with the hinge as we're freely positioning these shelves in the, the bespoke designs that we offer. It just makes, makes sure there's no problem with that. Uh, but of course that setback meant when it all came together, the switch is too far from the door to activate. So that light's never going off. It does respond up to sort of 20 mil, 20, 30 mil maybe max, but certainly not this far. So the best solution I can think of is I'm going to drill through there, remount a switch. I'm going to have to drill right into here and then come out behind. 
um, and wire the new switch into the connectors of here and then I'll just leave this as a I'll just leave it in place because that's the, the neatest solution really as a redundant switch yeah so I've, I've just drilled that using this Luke's drilling jig it's got a 19 mil setting with an eight millimeter bushing and I've just packed it to around about a half mil so that 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 90 mil setting ends up on the middle of an 18 millimeter board. Okay, now I'm going to disconnect the lighting, just turn the power off to it when I start cutting cables. So I've taken this drawer out and that reveals where the socket for the lighting is and where we've hidden the lighting driver on the wall there. And while I'm just showing you this, these drawers, these were CNC made. So this is 18 millimeter pincer melamine faced MDF, all 18 millimeters. And they're on the tandem, the Blum Tandem 560F runners which will cope with 18 millimeter sides and while i'm doing this the customers raised an issue where all of the draw fronts are just slightly angled back so they don't like that if they run their hand over it they can feel they're just all slightly leaning back the fix for that is these little platforms that the draw boxes rest on at the back of the runners they can be raised so by raising the backs we'll tilt the whole draw box and tilt the the front back to straight. So I'll have to tweak all those in and then we should get nice flush fronts. See that has to happen on both sides. The thing to bear in mind with this type of undermount draw runner is the draw box itself is effectively floating on supports at all four corners and you have quite a lot of control about how, how, it, how each corner is positioned. So you can float that draw box in three dimensions to where it needs to be. This is the switch as it comes from our supplier lighting solutions. It's a latent lighting product. What I need to do is simply cut off a section of wire. So I've just got the switch and then rewire it into back into this assembly, which is now trapped well out of sight. It's trapped within the structure and I can't really pull it through. Um, so I just simply need to re reconnect the same type of component and then it should work as before.